So this is a very, very long overdue video. I have meant to film this since I started my channel in 2016, but it's kind of tricky with like getting all the camera angles and stuff, so I hope that this comes out okay. Today I'm going to show you how I restring my American Girl dolls. I'm going to be using Kanani over here. Now, um, if you watch my transformation videos, then you might recognize her. I got her in 2022 at the local flea market, and her limbs aren't like insanely loose. That's actually not why I'm restringing her. I had to get her a new torso because this original one on her is completely ripped. I'll show you a close up. You can see here, Kanani has these really bad tears. And when I first got her, I thought maybe her torso would be problematic because it looked kind of pale and you can see there's still a little bit of crayon mark still on it. It looks pretty thin and worn out and her neck strings were also cut. Um, but what happened is when I had strung her back together and then I like did her hair a second time, when her torso got wet and she was sitting to dry, um, the fabric is more fragile when it's wet and it caused one of these tears and the reason why I can't just like sew a patch on it which had been my initial um, solution is that this is where it meets the plastic like cup thing that the limb gets strung through and um, yeah that there's just no way you can like sew onto that and it's so thin so that's why I got her a new torso. Um, and it is cheaper to get a torso on eBay and replace it yourself if you feel confident in that. So, the only issue was getting a good skin match. But instead of sending her to the doll hospital and paying like $45 for just a new torso and having to send her in the mail, I found her torso on eBay for $21 all said and done. And we're going to do some at-home body repair. She's going to switch into the new torso which I've already cleaned the torso and washed the stuffing. So um, if you want to know how to clean the cloth torso and the stuffing, like do a deep clean of it, I have a video on that. I'll put it in the eye cards and I'll put it in the description. And if you want to know how to like just clean your doll in general, I'll put that video in the description too, because I have a tutorial on that. Um, because dolls like Kanani who are secondhand get the whole treatment. Now, Kanani will only be getting the restring today because she's already been cleaned. But basically, this is my technique for how to restring them. There are a lot of different ways that you can restring an American girl. I'm not saying that my method is the best method or the only method. I like to use supplies that I can find easily that I know are going to last for years. I have been doing this since 2012. That's when I first started restringing my own American girls. And um, I had to completely redo two of our childhood dolls, Molly and Samantha, because my dad improperly strung them when Molly's leg came off when we were kids. Um, he connected the limbs and it totally distorted their bodies. And um, actually it was thanks to his repair that I figured out a way to like combine his technique and the standard technique into a way that like works out. So um, you can just use this video as like a point of reference if you're not sure how these dolls come together. And whatever supplies you think are easier to use, more accessible to you, um, more convenient for you to use, then by all means, like I said, there's a lot of different ways. Um, I will show you the supplies in a minute and offer some alternatives. Um, the only thing is when it comes to elastic, this is where you really want to take consideration into what you use. When I was looking up tutorials many, many years ago, people were using hair elastics. I tried that, it doesn't work. Hair elastics aren't meant for like this kind of wear and tear. So just keep that in mind. Just think of like what your doll is doing with those elastics because you have to pull them really tight in order to properly restring them. And also this isn't a difficult process. It seems intimidating when you get your doll completely apart. However, the only thing that makes it a little tricky is the amount of tension that you're going to put on when you're like pulling the string through and that's where you can mess up and you'll have to like redo it a few times. Don't feel intimidated, don't feel bad. I, it definitely took me oh, like quite a bit of finessing to figure it out and like use the amount of tension and the more you do it, the more you'll get like muscle memory. So just know that practice makes perfect and your American girl doll isn't going to be mad at you if you string her a little too tight or a little bit too loose. 
she'll be patient. So without further ado, I am going to show you how this is done. And I also have a written tutorial on my Flickr with pictures if you prefer that. I almost always have picture and written tutorials for everything I do on this channel. I'll link that below too. I just redid all those photos with the Josephina doll that I got at the flea market that needed to be restrung. So um, let's get right into giving Kanani a new body. You will need a bowl to soak hot water in, which I don't have out here, either a plastic bag or a pillowcase to store your doll's stuffing in. If you're going to wash the stuffing, um, a pillowcase is what you're going to want to use so you can toss it in the washing machine. Um, bungee cords, so these are mini bungee cords. Basically the way you're going to determine the size of a bungee cord is um, the cups inside the doll they have to fit through the hole in the cup so these mini bungee cords I get them at Walmart they are the right size and one of these bungee cords does two limbs so you'll need two of these bungee cords if you're restringing the whole doll you're gonna need some pliers two is ideal but um, you don't have to you have to um, I like to use this crimping tool a pair of scissors and these very small washers these are number 10 size um, they can be a little bit bigger it really doesn't matter because you're going to be folding them in half now you don't have to use the washers if you are going to knot your doll strings um, you can skip that and you don't need the crimping tool and the second pair of pliers but if you're going to use the washers you're going to need these extra bits you can also buy they're called different things. They're like electrical clamps or brass inserts. Um, some people get them in the electrical section of the hardware store. I forget where I got them before. But those are like little clamps that are very similar to what they used to use in the old school American girls up until about 2010. Um, I personally don't like those. Those are pretty expensive and oh hi Oliver and they can clink, clank around in the dolls if you get the longer size which was all I could find. They're like crimping sleeves I think. They're, they're called different things. You can also buy them restringing kits on eBay people sell them they'll even put like the cord in you can use um, like regular elastic that they sell on eBay for restringing too if you want um, but I like bungee cord it's meant to hold a lot of weight I've been using it for years it's pretty much what I've exclusively used to restring my dolls and it's done a really good job I have dolls that are restrung 10 years ago that are still holding up um, and it's it's easy to get. You can get this and the washers at Walmart and they're really cheap and you can do a bunch of dolls with the washers so I just find it more economic because I've restrung so many of my dolls but that's really up to you. Um, this video is more just to show you how they come apart and if you think of something better then go for it. And if your doll has a zip tie you're gonna need another zip tie to put back in or you can um, get neck strings if you prefer you can switch what you want and this is the torso I got for Kanani it had stuffing in it when I got it the stuffing is just in a pillowcase because I washed it already because um, I wanted it to be nice and squeaky clean for her so it's not perfect Kanani has a pretty unique skin tone which is another reason why I didn't want to send her to the doll hospital because I from what I've read they don't actually um, make her skin tone anymore and you can't get a new head for her either so this is you know close-ish it's a little bit warmer more yellow toned but honestly like you're not going to be able to tell they, they look kind of funny with their cloth bodies so I'm going to get her undressed and we're going to get to restringing Kanani originally is supposed to have neck strings but my dolls were cut so I have a zip tie in here that's why the head of this is kind of big um, if you're dealing with neck strings, I use a little flathead screwdriver to get up under the knot, like the first knot, and loosen it that way because I can't do it with my fingers. Um, some people are better at getting knots out. And if you are dealing with a zip tie, you're going to need like something sharp. I like to use little wire cutters. You do have to be kind of careful because you don't want to nick the back of their neck. And um, you're going to need a little seam ripper if they've never been opened up before because usually this is sewn together. So you just pop a couple stitches and then you'll have to like wiggle the head of the zip tie out. Okay. 
The factory American Girl zip ties have smaller heads and are a little bit thinner, so they're easier to cut. And then, get her head off. And we're gonna set Kanani aside. Should I get like a, bit, a teeny little nick here? Um, but as you can see, she already has a nick on her face from when I got her. She was like that. This doll's had a hard life. If you want to see her transformation, it's called Cloudy with a Chance of Dolls. She's one of the dolls featured in that. She had like pink all over here, pink all over her legs, blue scribbles on her torso. Now that this is removed, we are going to pull out all the stuffing. So Kanani has new stuffing that came with this torso, which by the way, how perfect is this? This has a 2011 tag date, as does the one that came on her. I am going to save this stuffing in case I need it. And I'm not gonna wash it because I haven't had her that long, only about two years. I got her on September 11th, 2022, at the flea market for $10. So I'm just gonna like pull out her stuffing, removing my red hair that's in there. And uh, we're gonna just stash this for future projects. And if this is, if you want to get new stuffing, you can absolutely get new stuffing, but honestly, it's like better for the environment and cheaper if you just wash the old stuffing. Some of the newer dolls, um, like especially with Bitty Baby, they have substantially less stuffing, so some people like to just add a little bit more in there. Bitty Babies aren't strung though, they're glued into their limbs, so you don't need this tutorial for them. Yeah, you can definitely see there's still like some crayon marks on here. And so once your doll is unstuffed, you can put the stuffing aside, or like I said, you can put this in a pillowcase and toss it in the washing machine, and you can even run it through the dryer. I have a tutorial on that. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an American Girl anatomy lesson, in case you've never taken one of these dolls apart. So, their cloth torso with the four limbs, neck string or zip tie as a closure, and then they have these sockets on the inside that are attached to the body. They're like glued in place. And then you have these white cups with strings that run through. So there's two white cups per each limb. So there's one on the inside and one on the outside. They're connected with string, and on dolls from 2010 onward, they have knots. And on dolls that are before then, they have little metal clamps. Now, the metal clamps, in theory, sound better, but they actually can fail. So sometimes your doll will lose a limb because those metal clamps break. I have two dolls that that happened to. Literally got them, like, broken that way because these those metal things failed. However, the newer dolls are more prone to be loose in the first place because it's really difficult to like get the knot in the exact position and get it really tight. So that's why I don't knot, but that's what I mean about you can do metal clamps or knots. It's your preference. Um, it's very important not to lose these cups when you have them out. And that's how it works. So now that you have an idea of it, if you can think of better supplies that you want to use, now you have some idea of like what's going on in there. These limbs are strung independently, so they're not connected. A lot of dolls that are strung are like connected with one string or like two. These are separate. That's what gives them like a nice range of motion and pretty like solid at holding their poses. So the first step is you are going to have to cut the strings. Now this is going to be scary if you've never done this before. You're going to feel like you're doing something evil. And be really careful because this is going to come out. And there's one inside. You can see there's like string. Um, they're hard here, so you're not going to be able to get that out just yet. So make sure you put these cups in, this, in a safe place. You're going to have four that are out and about once you finish cutting the limbs. You can see here, like, some of them have more give because the limb was looser in the first place. And do be mindful when you're cutting these not to accidentally nick the torso. Um, it doesn't matter for me because I'm getting rid of this, but you can easily accidentally cut the torso. Yeah, and you can just see how bad that is. 
So at this stage, you're going to have two legs, two arms, and you're going to hear the cups rattling around inside. And you're going to have four cups, and you're going to have your torso. This is Kanani's new torso. And this is the stage where I really recommend, once they're completely disassembled, this is a great time to wash the torso. If you have any stains, like you can see part of Kanani's old stain here that like was just really stubborn. Um, sometimes it's easier to remove stains if you don't have the whole doll to work with. That's what I did with my Lindsay, my girl of your Lindsay. She had mold stains all over her limbs. And when I had her apart for restringing, I just wrapped everything up separately and it made it a lot more convenient. So anything you need to do like that, do it now. Now is the time while they're apart. So for the next part, this is where you're gonna have to get the plastic cups out. This is where you're gonna need the bowl. Um, you might want a little bit bigger one than this because all the ones are gonna soak in it a towel so you don't make a mess with water and this is where you're going to need pliers um, i like these needle nose ones that are bent because you can like get in there they're nice and curved but you don't have to and you're going to get some boiling water now you can heat it up on the stove just if you heat up your water on the stove pour the pan of water into another bowl because if these make contact with the edges of the metal pan they'll melt you can heat it up in the microwave um, I used to do that. The heat isn't always very even and it seems to cool off too fast so it's going to create more work for you. And I like to use my electric kettle um, because the water gets nice and hot. It stays hot for a while and it gives me plenty of time to like work with the limbs. And when you're done this step, don't put your bowl in the sink just yet. You're going to need to heat up the limbs um, again at some point. And while the water is heating up in the kettle, I have my limbs prepped in the bowl. I'm gonna pour the water in. And basically the hot water is going to soften the top of the limb enough so you can flex the plastic to get the cup out. That's why you need to heat it up with hot water because you're just gonna break the cup um, trying to get it out without heating this up. And you need those cups to properly string the doll. So once you have the cups out, you're going to need to put them, string them with the string and put them back in the proper spot. So the, there is a very specific way that they have to go. The ones on the inside of the body, right, you're going to take the flat edge and put it here. So the, the rounded part is pointing out. Now with the inside of the limb, you're going to want the rounded side to be in. So they're going to look like this, basically. This is going to be completely inside, this is going to be outside. So my water is boiling and I'm going to pour it in. And I'm going to let them soak for, I don't know, like 30 seconds to a minute. This water is actually boiling, so if it's actually boiling, it's going to soften up much quicker. Um, a lot of people, when I make tutorials, like on boil washing and stuff, they don't actually have the water boiling, and then they wonder why it's harder to remove a head, or it's the hair isn't looking as neat. It's because the temperature does matter. You want it to be boiling. They're very, they're very hard. And then, once you do that, like, you see how much squishier it is? You're gonna get the cup, and you're gonna pull it out, and then there's gonna be a little piece of string there. And I will repeat it for you here. You're gonna make sure the cup is right on the outside edge, you're gonna pull it out, and you're gonna get rid of the string, and you wanna shake the water out. Don't worry, like there is gonna be a little bit of water in here. It's it's gonna evaporate out. Um, I've never had a problem with them molding on the inside. So if you wanna like get right to restringing after this, it's, it's not an issue. And once you're done that, you're going to have a total of eight cups, two for each limb. So four that go on the insides of the limb and four that go inside the cloth torso. Okay, so now we're going to prep the strings and the cups that go inside the limb. So you're only gonna need four cups. Just keep the other four out of the way and someplace safe. So like I said, one of these bungee cords is going to do two different limbs. 
So the nice thing about using the bungee cord is you can cheat. You fold them in half and cut it in half, right? These hooks will slide right off. You don't need these hooks. You can get rid of them or save them for something else. These already have like little wire ties. You can use these instead of a brass insert, a washer or not. It's kind of like it saves you some work. So you're gonna like string it through and you're gonna put that, the wire, on the round part of the cup because remember, this is going to go in there. And so that makes it really easy to prep. Now I will show you, if you're not using bungee cord, um, how you can, how you prep it if you don't already have that. So I'll just snip one end off here. Those will slide right off. Then I'm gonna cut this in half. So I am gonna use this third one here. We're gonna cheat a little bit. All right, so this is, this is the weird thing that I've never seen anyone else do and I got this idea from my dad. I mean, maybe someone else has done it. I'm not saying I'm the only person, but this is my dad's invention. He didn't have brass inserts, so he thought of doing this. So you're gonna use this as a stopper, right? And you're probably thinking, well, that's just gonna fall right off. Well, it is. That's where the two pliers come in handy. You're gonna get your two pairs of pliers, and you're gonna bend it. You see how it's like now in a curved shape? And sometimes I like to take these crimpers and just tighten it up a little bit. Now I'm not going to make it totally flat. I need to get it on the bungee cord. But see, I'm kind of the idea is I'm going to fold this. So I'm going to thread this through. Now it's ideal here that you want the flat part of the of the washer to butt up against the top part of this cup instead of the rounded part. It's just gonna work out a little bit better, but if you put it on the wrong way, it's not the end of the world. It'll still work. And then I'm gonna take my crimper. It's gonna crimp it down. And now it's in place. And I'm gonna thread it through. And it's like a little stopper here. And now I have all four of these prepped to go inside the limbs and um, that's what I mean about the brass inserts, the clamps that they used to use in the factory breaking. If you clamp down on these really hard it will like actually split the piece of metal whether you're using a washer or you're using one of those clamps so you do want to make sure it's clamped down tightly but you don't want to do it so hard where you're cracking the metal. Now, if you're doing knots instead, you would knot the top of these and the knot would sit up out here. I don't like the knot method. I just can't get it to work for me, but that is an option. So we're back at the kitchen. The bowl is out, the limbs are in it. We're gonna put more hot water in. As you guessed it, we have to soften the vinyl up one last time. Now you're not gonna need this bowl after this step, so you can put it in the sink once you're done. And once your limbs are nice and squishy, you're gonna take the cup, remember round side goes in, you want the flat side to be butting up against the inside of the limb. And this is what it's gonna look like, and you're gonna repeat that process on all four limbs. Round side goes in. And um, I always like to have kind of a little extra long bungee cord that's, like there's gonna be extra. I'm probably gonna end up trimming off about that much when we're done. So it's just easier if you have a little bit more to grab. And you wanna make sure to shake out as much water as possible. Again, water's gonna get in there. It's not the end of the world. I've never had it be an issue. this. So now we have four limbs that have these strings coming out and cups inside.
And now we are preparing to go into the next phase where we string the limbs into the cloth torso. Now if you're using washers, you're going to want to do a little bit of prep for this. You're going to want to get four washers and you're going to want to pre like bend them because you need to do that. You can't like bend it while it's on the string. It's just easier this way. So use your pliers. I find this jewelry making crimping tool like is awesome for this. I bought it at Walmart years ago explicitly for this purpose and that's pretty much all I used it for but it was worth every penny. You can use like really anything that clamps down. So we're gonna have four of these and part of why I like using washers is sometimes um, it does take some finesse to get the tension on the elastic right once you string it through the body and you can make it too loose or too tight and if you buy those like metal clamps uh those cost more money and if you end up having to like cut it off and start over that can get kind of expensive whereas like you can get a whole bag of washers for barely anything i've been i mean i bought this years ago and i've restrung quite a few dolls with it and i still have quite a few left over because you need eight to do a whole doll. So that can be a lot when you're buying those things of clamps. And here we go. For this next step, you're gonna need your cloth torso, your limbs, the crimper tool or whatever you're gonna use to clamp down the washers, the four washers, and the four cups. Obviously, if you're doing the knot method, you just need the cups and the limbs and the body. All right, I'm gonna try my best to make sure this gets on frame. I'm filming by myself and I don't have a viewfinder that flips around. So we're gonna have the torso. I like to start with the legs, but it really doesn't matter. Now, it does matter what hole you put them through. Remember, you wanna do the front of the body and make sure the legs are facing right. There would be nothing more annoying than if you did this and you realize you put the limbs on the wrong place. So you're going to thread the cord through and you're going to want to try to move all of this fabric out of the way. And then you're going to take your cup. Now remember you want flat side down. You want the rounded part pointing up. You're going to pull your bungee cord through and you don't need to pull it really tight right now. Then you're going to put your washer on flat side down. That's less important if you put the washer on the wrong way, it doesn't matter. And obviously, if you're doing the knot method, then you're gonna have to just knot this somehow. Now, this is the tricky part. This is what takes some finesse. You have to pull this cord very tight. If there's too much slack, what's gonna happen is the limb is gonna be loose. Now, this can be a little trick though, if you have a doll that like the string is in good shape, but uh, maybe the knot or the crimper inside wasn't placed in the exact right spot, you can put, like tie something like a zip tie or an elastic right between the like knot or the metal clamp and the top of the cup. And by filling in that gap, it restores the tension. I've done that before. If I didn't want to restring a whole limb because the string was in good condition. So you're gonna need to pull it tight. now. You can pull it a little too tight, a little too tight, and your doll's gonna be a little too tight. Um, better too tight than too loose. Uh, ask my Nelly doll. Um, and you're gonna take your crimpers, and that's why you kind of want it like folded over enough so you can do this. And then you're gonna squeeze it together while holding the tension, holding the tension, holding the tension. I've clamped it down. Feels pretty good. There you go. And you're going to repeat this step all the way around. So now we're going to get her other leg. We're going to thread it through. Their torsos do get in the way. It's like super annoying. You want to put your cup flat side down. You want to take your pre-bent washer or your crimping sleeve, whatever you're using. Slide it down. Make sure it's got some tension there. Before you release the string, make sure that your thing is fully clamped because it'll go right back on the inside. Now we've got the other leg. And now we're gonna do the arms. 
See, it's really not that bad. It seems scary when you have them all apart, but they are magnificently constructed. Very simple yet effective. Flat side down. Washer, flat side down. Get it nice and tight. This is the hardest part, like clamping it and keeping the tension. Everything else is pretty easy. Did go? Last one. And there you have it. Your doll is strung. Now, I will show you what you can do with this extra bungee cord. Okay, so you have like a, quite a bit of extra cord. Um, now you don't want to cut it like too close to the top of the knot or the, the washer or the metal clamp. You probably want to leave at least like an inch. Um, so that's usually what I do. I leave like an inch just because you don't want all this like crowding up the inside of the body. And you're going to notice that this is like frayed. Um, you don't have to do anything about that. I mean, it, it'll fray. I've had dolls that I restrung 12 years ago that I've never touched since and um, they, the, the cord frayed and it's still fine. But I will show you a step if you want to like clean it up. Repeat the process all the way around. Okay, so there are a few options. You can um, leave it alone, which is fine. You can put some glue over here. You can, I don't know, use a zip tie or something. But you can also just melt the end. Um, I do this for fraying fabric on doll clothes. It is a little bit smelly, um, so it's probably not the best for your lungs if you do it like once in a while. It's not the end of the world, but like if you're gonna be restringing a billion dolls every day, then you don't want to do that. And you want to be really careful though not to accidentally get the heat too close to the body. But yeah, it just melts it and it makes it nice and clean and then you just let it cool off for a second. I mean, it's like not an important step, but if you want to, you can. It just makes it a little neater. When I have restrung dolls for other people that like I know in real life, that's what I do. Just a little bit meter. I mean, if you're using um, a different kind of cord, it might not even fray, but bungee cord frays a little bit because it's got like this fabric coating on the outside. Okay, now we're on to the second to last step, restuffing the body. This is pretty self-explanatory. So this is the new stuffing that was with this torso. I washed it and actually washed it a few days ago. I just didn't have time to film this tutorial. So it's just been safely stashed in here now they do have a lot of stuffing even the newer dolls they have a lot of stuffing so the main thing here is that when you're restuffing them you want to really 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 pack it down as much as you can in the rump they are supposed to have ample rumps it might look a little silly at first but if you are too shy about packing the stuffing down here, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna get to the top of the neck and you're gonna have all this leftover stuffing and you're gonna be trying to cram it in the shoulders and they're gonna have really buff looking shoulders and you're gonna have trouble getting the head back on. So you wanna make sure that there's more stuffing down here than up here because you need to get the head back on. So this is just kind of tedious. You're just gonna take like, you know, your handful of stuffing, work it down. And you're just gonna pack it into the butt. And uh, the older your doll, the bigger butt they're gonna have. So if you're dealing with a Pleasant Company doll, know that they have a lot more stuffing. And make sure you like turn your doll a few times during this. You wanna pack like the stuffing down the front too. Make sure it's really evenly distributed. And fun fact, when you restuff your doll, it gives them a little bit of a diet because everything is nice and packed in tightly. Whereas when they're 
you know, they're old and they've been hugged and played with and dressed. Their stuffing fluffs up. So I have lots of old Pleasant Company stock dolls that can wear clothes I just bought from American Girl this year and it's because I repacked their stuffing and they're skinnier. So it's a little trick. It is not true that the Pleasant Company dolls can't fit new work clothes. It's all about the stuffing. If you pack it down again, you can get them to wear newer clothes. All right, so now all the stuffing is back in. You wanna make sure that it's not poking up too much by the neck. You're gonna get your doll's head. And um, it works best if you put them on backwards. So if you put their nose facing the neck strings, then you wanna make sure to get the little like Lip, lip thing at the base of their necks and I'm just going to put it in kind of loosely and then do my first knot and when you do your first knot you want to make sure that like that lip isn't showing because if it is it'll pop right out and then you want to knot it a second time while holding all that tension I used to have so much trouble tying the neck strings. And uh, yeah, and you can see like, this is what I mean. I lost some of the tension there, so I'm gonna have to re redo it. Um, and if it's a zip tie, it's a little bit easier actually getting the neck back, the head back on. And there you have it, you can see I have her arms and legs straight out. She's nice and tight. I mean, you know, if you shake her a little bit, one of them might move, but her new torso is all assembled. The lovely Miss Kanani is all reassembled. You can see that this is her new body. There's no tearing. And it's actually a really good color match. I was a little nervous when it came because it looked kind of light, but it it works super well. Um, so I will have the written tutorial linked in the description if you want to see like the instructions written out with pictures. That's on my Flickr. You don't need a Flickr to view it. Um, I will put the tutorial for deep cleaning the cloth torso and the tutorial for cleaning your American Girl doll, like the hair and scrubbing the skin and all of that, down below. Uh, keep in mind that practice makes perfect, that even though it's a relatively simple technique, um, it can take a little while to just hone in the right amount of like tension on the elastic, but don't be discouraged. And just use this tutorial as a guide. You can change the materials based on what works for you and your budget and what's accessible. Um, there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different techniques that I've seen. This is just what has always worked for me. And best of luck restringing your American girls. Until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.